In this video, we're going to look at how to find the resultant force using scale diagram. You will need to have the following equipment. Pencil, a ruler, and a set square. And if you think you might make a mistake, uh, a rubber, and finally a protractor. So, in this, we can see that we've got one force of 400 newtons, one of 300 newtons. And the first thing that you need to do is decide on a sensible scale. So try and make an easy scale. For this, you might choose one centimetre is 100 newtons, or you might choose one centimetre is 50 newtons, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to write that down so I don't forget. One centimetre is 50 newtons. So there are two choices for the way that you can do this. The first is the tip to tail method, and the second is the parallelogram, or in this case, rectangle. I'm going to demonstrate the uh, tip to tail method. So for this one, I draw in my first one is the 400 newton one, and because one centimeter is 50 newtons, that means this will need to be eight centimeters long. So I'll draw that with the arrowhead, and just to remind me, I'll write 400 newtons next to it. Then I'm going to uh, start drawing the other vector, the 300 newtons, from the um, tip of the last one where the arrowhead was and 300 newtons would be six centimeters so I can draw in that and now to uh, I should label that as well and now to find the resultant force I should draw in the resultant force starting from the start of the first vector and finishing at the end of the uh, second one where the arrowhead is, and I can do that now. And then to that's my resultant force. And to find the size of that, I then need to use my ruler to measure the length of that, which I can do carefully, and that comes out to be 10 centimeters long, which therefore will be. 500 newtons. Uh, those of you who like maths might notice that this is a 345 triangle, so that's not entirely surprising. And then the last thing we can do is measure the angle of the resultant force. And if we do that, that comes out at 37 degrees, so I can label that up. That's now finished, but I'm going to show you the alternative method, the so-called parallelogram method. So for this one, I would do the same thing as before in drawing in my first vector, which will be the 400 newton one, which is going to be 8 centimetres again. And then I'll label that 400 newtons. Then I'm going to do uh, the 300 newton one, but this time I'm going to start from the same starting point. This is the difference with the tip to tail method. I drew from the arrowhead of the first one was where I drew in the second vector, but this one they start at the same point. So I can draw in my second one, which needs to be six centimeters along again, and that's my 300 newton one. And then um, I need to complete the parallelogram that these would be two sides of, which is actually a rectangle in this case. So this is where a set square is useful, and I can uh, draw in that side, and then I can um, draw in the other side, and then my resultant vector is the diagonal across this rectangle, and if I draw that in, I end up with exactly the same thing, and the same way as before, I could measure the length and find that as 10 centimetres, which would give me the resultant of 500 newtons, and I could measure the angle with the protractor, which would give me a 37 degrees again.